Uh, good morning to you, uh, Landon, and thanks for joining us. Uh, thoughts on uh, what's going on in terms of, of the market, at least so far this morning, as the market tries to put together two green days in a row for the first time since late February. Uh, and then some some thoughts on maybe where some some investors and consumers are looking to entertain themselves uh, during the stay at home uh, actions that we're seeing across the world right now. Sure. I, you know, I, honestly, I would have thought that well, we, we would have seen a bigger move today in the market, given the uh, stimulus passing or, or getting agreement on. So uh, it's pretty interesting that it's very close to flat and it's a mixed market. There may be some consolidation here, which could be a good thing. Uh, I think the market could use a little calmer days. Um, I'm sure there'll be some volatile ones ahead, but every now and then it's nice to have a 1% move instead of a 7% move. Uh, so I have no problem with that. Uh, but then, we, you know, we talk about at home gaming, which is obviously really big. It was big before, you know, half or a third of America got locked down into a quarantine and it's even bigger now. And so when we look at the number of people playing games at home, uh, it's just going up uh, tremendously. And, and one of the companies that's going to benefit from that is Activision, ATVI. Uh, they're doing very well in this, in this uh, market with people staying home playing games. So um, when we look at Activision and, you know, they're only 15% off of their highs in February, which makes sense. I mean, they've sold off with the market, but not nearly as much as the market has. And the reason is because they're benefiting from this. This is a company that does really well. Um, they're, you know, they've got about six and a half billion dollars in revenue per year and margins of about 25%. So they're making a lot of money and they're doing it because people love their signature game, Call of Duty. Uh, you can see here, this is the, the number of people talking about playing those games um, and, and it's doing extremely well. And this is the chart of Call of Duty, uh, which is interesting. You know, this game came out in 2003. And in the 15 years since then, uh, they've released 15 versions of Call of Duty uh, with another one coming in March, which is really good timing because you got a lot of people staying at home playing games. So Call of Duty is a huge one. If you look at the top 10 revenue producing games over the last 10 years, uh, seven of those games are Call of Duty. So they are absolutely dominant. They don't have the number one position, which is Grand Theft Auto, uh, but they've got positions two through six and eight and nine. And then Microsoft sneaks in there with Minecraft at number 10. But Call of Duty absolutely dominates the gameplay uh, landscape. They've got another one coming out in March, like I said. And it's really good because not only are more and more people playing games, uh, which they benefit from because about half of their revenue comes from microtransactions, but more and more people are starting to play games. There's a lot, a lot more new gamers. So you can see these are mentions on social media of people talking about playing games for the first time or getting into gaming or just buying their equipment and, and starting off. And you can see that it is really, really starting to grow. It was on a nice uptrend prior to this, uh, but this, this current quarter that we're seeing now is you know, off the charts. And it's because people are staying at home and they're trying to find something to do. So Activision definitely going to benefit from this. You know, Landon, you, you bring up a really good question here. And that is with this video game being out since 2003, what's the normal shelf life for a game like this if they weren't to upgrade it and constantly upgrade it. How long does a, a game or a new game last in its peak before they start either upgrading it or bringing out another version of it or moving on to another game? Because as you know, uh, there's, a very, there's a gypsy mentality to these games as they, they move from one popular one to another. How, how do you guys judge that or can you even in this environment? Well, you know, if you if that chart that we had on Call of Duty with the spikes, you can see how short lived those are. Of course, the release dates are going to be much right. bigger. Everybody's going to get them then. Uh, but you're right that, you know, consumers, they the gamers, they hit these games pretty hard. You know, they're playing them a lot and they do like when the next big one comes out. I mean, there's some games that have stood the test of time. Call of Duty is definitely one of them, but they're releasing a new version every year, essentially. And so you can see here in this chart. You can basically pinpoint those release dates based on the spikes and you can see how much they kind of trail off. And that's the reason that they keep pumping out new content. Um, the good thing for these type of companies is that they, you know, 
majority of the investment into the into a game like this is in the core engine and then you've got additional investment into the storyline or making different models that kind of thing that are very marginal in cost and it's not nearly as big as creating a whole new game so they're just keeping this updated again and again over time getting new customers to come in and and buy that new game and some of the games are actually free to start playing, and it's just a matter of getting these microtransactions. So you can start playing for free, and their goal is to keep you playing and get you more and more engaged and, and to trickle in that revenue. And so uh, they've really got it figured out. Uh, they're doing a great job of keeping people engaged because, obviously, if they'd stuck with the 2003 version, nobody would be playing Call of Duty anymore. So it's a new version every year, pretty much, and there's always a different spin of it, spin on it. Sometimes it's, you know, they've got the Black Ops, they've got the Modern Warfare, Warfare they've got a World War II version. So all of it's very different, and, and it appeals to a different generation or a different type of audience, and people love to jump in and do it. Yeah, and it's definitely an industry that was disrupted uh, intensely by Fortnite. You, all, you you talked about some of those games being free to play initially and those in-game purchases, not necessarily to help you be better at them, but more of just give you some type of aesthetic differences. I think it was important, too. You don't want those pay-to-win pay type of games because then people get discouraged if they can't uh, compete uh, in that way. But uh, Activision, is, uh, Activision Blizzard is also uh, kind of a powerhouse in three divisions. Obviously, it's got its King Digital, which is going to be more in the mobile space, Blizzard, which is a lot of the PC gaming. And then, of course, Activision is where Call of Duty falls. But one thing for sure, Landon, in this particular space, you know, people want to play where their friends are playing. Usually there's, uh, you know, kind of success feeds on itself in a way where one game's clearly the winner of the season. Is Call of Duty that winner right now where Activision can kind of wear that crown, at least for the time being, in a time where maybe video games have more attention on them than ever? Yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, for a while, Red Dead Redemption was doing extremely well. Grand Theft Auto is always hot, uh, but Call of Duty seems to be the one that just keeps coming back uh, and, and doing extremely well year over year. And, you know, they've had this, the newest release is called uh, Warzone. It's coming out in, uh, I believe, this month. I think it's maybe over the next week or so. Uh, and they've had that scheduled for quite a while, but uh, the timing is fantastic right now. I mean, with everybody staying at home, coming out with a new version of their number one game that seems to bring in a ton of revenue every release is really good to be timing it at this point. So uh, getting a little lucky on the timing there. And uh, I think that, well, have to see you know we're going to watch and see what the mentions look like when that does come out but we have no reason to think it's not going to spike just like every other time they've released a version of call of duty yeah and i think I, from what i've read on that one it's a, another one of those free to play so maybe kind of a way of teasing in some of those potential uh, buyers of the of the overall call of duty uh into kind of playing it and getting a taste during this time so we'll see how that uh, uh, unfolds here but kevin i want to bring you back into the conversation here and, and then maybe you might have a follow-up for landon uh kind of how to approach this from a trading standpoint or, or really what you're taking away uh from some of the data that he's saying yeah i i just want to know and landon you may have more information than me or alex you may have the answer is though i have spent what seems like a major portion of my net worth buying video games. I have never actually played one, <laughs> but I have five children and they play them. But top three, what are the top three games out right now for our viewers to be looking at in one, two, three? And it can be any company. It doesn't have to be Activision. Do you guys know what the top three are to list? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer to Alex on this one. I used to play games 10 or 15 years ago. I'm a little bit out of that. Uh, world. So, Alex, I'm going to have to defer to you, and I hope you have an answer. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm an expert in this space, but uh, I'd say I'm maybe a little bit more connected to it. I, I fired up the Xbox the other day to see what my friends were up to, and I can say that to Landon's point here on the Call of Duty, that seemed to be what all my friends who are still playing video games were playing. I, I don't know when the re release date was, but uh, from your data, Landon, it looks like it might have been somewhere around the year year turn. So it's something that's still, you know, got eyes on that, still people playing it. And maybe this is the, uh, the catalyst to get new buyers into it. Like I said, I was someone who fired up the Xbox for the first time. And, and what I can't remember, maybe six months uh, because of this stay at home, uh, kind of situation. So, you know, it does seem to be that that is the particular one. I couldn't tell you what uh, second or third are, Kevin. Um, but Landon, I want to come back to you as we wrap things up here. 
when you're looking at this and you see kind of clear trends uh, in a particular space, and let's assume that maybe Call of Duty is that winner right now, we know that that's going to be beneficial, uh, you know, beneficial for the bottom line of a company like Activision, especially when it's kind of their flagship game. Um, when you look at this and you have these potential macro backdrops that are going to lead to more consumers coming in, my, my gut instinct is to assume that, you know, you guys are probably bullish on that. Uh, is that the case when you're looking at something like Activision and really the space in general, or uh, do you think it's largely priced in already? Um, you know, it's hard to say if it's priced in or not, but you can't ignore the fact that this stock is down half of what the market is down. Uh, so it's definitely been favored by Wall Street more than other companies. Uh, so people know that this is going to cause an increase in gameplay. I think that's definitely the case. However, um, you know, they're doing really well, 25% margins. They've got this microtransactions figured out. They've got a new game coming out that's free that's going to uh, take advantage of those microtransactions. And they're going to increase that $3 billion a year that they're getting off of that type of gameplay. Um, so I really like that. We're definitely bullish on Activision long term. And there's other names. You know, you can look at Take-Two. Uh, they're doing very well also. And then also kind of a side play is NVIDIA because they're the ones powering a lot of this. You have to have a very powerful uh, computer in order to play these. And so there's going to be other companies that benefit from that. But definitely bullish on Activision long term. I'd also take a look at Take-Two, even Nintendo uh, and NVIDIA as well.